another update in the experimenting with extreme environments. Here we have the Raspberry Pi Pico running its uh, LCD display. It has a cable coming out going to this camera, so this camera is running, so is the Pi Pico. This camera is not plugged in, it would need a power cord going into one of these glands. This camera is just representing what's going to be in here eventually, a camera. And what I'm going to show today is that I have this motor controller working. So it's connected to the motor. It has the two limit switches which are going to prevent it from rotating too far in either direction. And I'm just simulating the Pico control of the motor with these two switches here to make it rotate counterclockwise and clockwise. So if I rotate it counterclockwise, I can press one of these limit switches over here to stop it from rotating like that. And now it doesn't rotate in that direction. And if I keep that limit switch held and I push the other direction here, it will come off the stops and I can let go of this switch. And if I keep going in that direction, I can use the other limit switch to stop it. And then if I let go of this switch and try and go in the other direction, still holding the limit switch, it will rotate in that direction. So the limit switches only prevent rotation in one direction and the motor controller can still go back in the other direction. So that's going to prevent the cable from the bottom here getting all wound up in the mechanism as if it rotates too far. So that's all good. This is now working. This motor controller card is going to go into this box and there will be a cable going to the motor and a cable going to the camera. All good. So that's the next step is to put the motor controller into the control box and hook up the Pi Pico to actually drive it. This, this connector here is already set up to plug into the Pi Pico interface card, but I haven't done the software because I don't actually have a Pi Pico W yet. Uh, I, I just may program it anyway. I'll just program it to maybe use some um, magnetic uh, read relays or something so that I can change direction without opening the case. We'll just use that until I get the Pi Pico W to operate remotely. This is a low frame rate video snippet from the No IR camera just to prove that the camera on the tripod is working. This is the Pico Porch motor controller circuit. And what it does is it allows some Raspberry Pi Pico to control a motor using these terminals over here. And the unique thing about this circuit is that it has two limit switches which limit the uh, motor uh, rotation in one direction each. So this one limits the clockwise rotation and this one limits the counterclockwise rotation. So there are a bunch of field effect transistors here. They're all very low threshold gates. The N channel FETs are BSS138 and the P channel FETs are BSS84. So they can all be driven by 3 volt logic because they have such low thresholds. And one of the things that we want to do here is run the motor in either direction. So we have essentially an H bridge uh, made up of these four FETs. And they have the, of course, limit switches interrupting the current flow in one direction each. Now, in order to make these uh, H bridges work without shoot through current, 
we want to make sure that they turn off faster than they turn on so that they're these two FETs, for example, are never on at the same time because the one that's turning on turns on slower than the one turning off. And we do that with these time constants in the middle here, these RC time constants. And we have you know, an inverter here just to square up these time delays. So when this FET, for example, turns on with a three volt signal here. It uh, makes this signal go low, turning this FET off, which allows this signal to charge up, which will turn this, eventually turn this signal low, which turns on this P FET, which will supply current to the motor, or at least voltage. And at the same time, of course, when this is going low, this goes high, and this goes low, which turns this FET off. So this FET turns off before this one actually turns on. But this one turns on and creates a high voltage here. And we can have the other side of the motor controlled by these components. So we can make sure that this part of the motor goes low when this one's high, making it turn on and rotate. And then this limit switch can interrupt that current when it gets too, when it rotates too far. Now note that when we're going the other way and this side of the motor is high and this one's low, this limit switch cannot uh, interrupt the current because the, the current would flow through this FET going and which is pulling the, that pin low. In that situation, this limit switch would be able to interrupt the current going to the motor, so it can stop it going in the other direction. So what else do we need to know? Uh, yeah, the motor can op obviously rotate bidirectionally, and the limit switches prevent it from rotating in one direction each, but they cannot limit, each limit switch cannot control both directions, it only controls one. So all this circuitry is here just to make sure we don't have shoot through on these pairs of field effect transistors so that the one turning off turns off faster than the one turning on. And we can reverse the polarity of the voltage to the motor. And that's just controlled by these two pins, two connectors here, because one's a header and one's a barrier strip. So it just depends how we want to connect the card up. But the two pins are showing what happens in this truth table. So if they're both the same, either low or high, the motor does not rotate. It's only when one is low and one is high that we get a rotation. And if we reverse the polarity of both pins, then we get the counterclockwise rotation. So fairly straightforward, but I wanted to make a printed circuit board that would implement this H-bridge control, simple H-bridge control with low voltage inputs, high current outputs, and preventing shoot through on the H bridge and allowing limit switches to make, make sure that the motor doesn't over rotate the final 